Imagine the powerful moment when this. you encounter a masterpiece. This is the one. Now consider how that experience might change if you become the owner of the artwork. What if you held it in your hand? Je suis resté géré pendant une heure à contempler les tableaux dans, dans la voiture. En face de moi, comme ça, j'avais mis le, le modique Diani, j'avais mis le ferment léger, j'avais positionné le bridge. C'est là qu'on s'en rend compte. C'est là qu'on s'en rend compte. This is from the Netflix documentary The Spider-Man of Paris, an art thief who stole for over 100 million worth of paintings. And he had this true realization once he held the paintings in his hands. What if, however, you could own only a fraction of the masterpiece and maybe never lay eyes on it? This is the intriguing proposition by Masterworks, a platform that claims to democratize investment in fine art. Masterworks is a unicorn and its allure is undeniable. They use an art index that outperforms the broader art market, the S&P 500, and pretty much everything else. They also display a compelling track record of success through the paintings they've already sold. And they are now the largest buyer in the art investment world with 400 paintings in their name. This all looks great, but beneath this impressive facade, there may be an ugly reality for investors. We want to uncover the truth through a due diligence and we'll rely mainly on one source, Masterworks. We will be looking here at the strategy, the portfolio of Masterworks and the bigger picture, its place in the art world and is there other considerations in the long term for investors. Strategy first, Masterworks aims to buy and sell piece of artwork at a profit. And they say this is something that will take typically three to 10 years. We should know that the art market overall is pretty much flat. It doesn't look like a very attractive asset class. Therefore, Masterwork has to add value for its selection process. They do so by implementing a data-driven strategy. They have a big price database they've created and it's about understanding the appreciation rate by artist market. There's this funny concept of artist market, not artist as an individual, but it's true that the price of one artist in general would rise if one of his or her pieces sells at a higher value. And the technical term for the strategy is momentum strategy. It's a quantitative approach and it's identified as one of the factors that plays in the stock market, but also in other asset classes. If we look at Wikipedia, the definition is that momentum investing is a system of buying stocks or other securities that have had high returns over the past three to 12 months and selling those that have poor returns over the same period. So we can replace stocks by artwork, and the three to 12 months uh, can also be replaced for artwork. It has to be a bit longer. And that's how you get the strategy of Masterworks. One question here based on this momentum strategy is that you should hold on to your winner and sell your losers. Let's put ourselves in the seat of Masterwork. And, and as you say, there's two paintings. What's performing very well. It's a hot artist. Let's say it's a Bansky. And the other one is doing poorly. You should sell the one that's doing poorly. But what does that imply for investors? They show a track record of negative returns and the other one that has potentially positive return doesn't really show up. It doesn't work on this floor. There's a bit of a contradiction in the essence of their strategy. The other question about the strategy is the repeat buys. You're just a steward for investors and they've signed up for up to 10 years. Uh, if it's going higher, you should hold. And if you think it's not going higher, you should sell. And when Masterworks has exited two offerings from Condo, for example, why do they buy more? Going back to the momentum strategy, if you exit, it means like the returns are limited. They talk about an artist market. You shouldn't buy more of the same artist. We also have to compare the strategy of Masterworks to that of other asset classes, such as private equity, which is fairly similar because we talk about private assets that don't have any liquidity. The job of the investment manager is to buy them, hold them, and then find a seller. On the surface, there's also a similar incentive. 
And just like Charlie Munger said, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. Masterworks, just like private equity, takes management fees and a 20% carry, which is a 20% of the gains achieved by their sale, if it's positive. So you would think that just like private equity, they have an incentive of holding on for longer and going big. But the missing piece here in this difference with private equity is that Masterworks take an 11% commission upfront. They add 11% markup to the price of the painting before they commercialize it to their network. That is not very clearly disclosed, but it is available on the SEC documents that Masterworks has to file and it changes everything. Rather than buying and holding, they have a big incentive to churn, to buy and sell. The carry is significant and it's an incentive to hold, but it's at risk, whereas the 11% is guaranteed and upfront. Those are interesting concerns, but after all, what matters is the performance and masterworks seem to deliver consistently. They've been selling artwork with returns between 4.1 and 3 to 5%, or if we remove those outliers between 10 and 39%. They are nice figures, but are they the kind of returns that we expect from artwork? You hope for eye-popping returns. And there's an example from Masterworks, which shows the eye-popping return that Oprah made in the sale of her Klimt. What's quite funny here, there's a lot to say about the title itself. The eye-popping 71% in record time is actually a holding from 2006 to 2017, so 11 years, and 71% would have underperformed the S&P 500 during the same time. You could also refer to another big sale that happened recently, the one of the collection of Paul Allen, which he sold for a record 1.5 million. He multiplied many times his initial investment. He transformed hundreds of millions into billions. The one question you need to ask about the track record is, do you invest in paintings to get kind of equity-like returns? The second question is about the dispersion. Dispersion means that all those paintings have different price action. But what does that mean for the portfolio overall? Let's take stocks from the S&P 500 to illustrate this dispersion concept. I've got my very basic spreadsheet here. I'm taking a random sample of stocks from the S&P and I'll just rank them alphabetically. I've got 12 stocks from the S&P 500 and I rank their annual performance. The average is 7.73, the maximum is 93%, the minimum is 42%. Now let's say I sell the best three and my average return becomes minus 5% and the maximum is now 11%, the minimum stays at minus 42. Could this be also happening with the portfolio of Masterworks? When you look at the track record, you shouldn't look at the things that have been sold. You should look at the value of the portfolio overall. Are they just selling their best performer and holding on to the assets that don't perform and may never perform well? You've got to consider this based on the broader art market, which was really booming post-pandemic and now has cooled down. The third part of our analysis is about the longer term. And there's two considerations here. First, the fact that masterwork has become the biggest buyer in the art market with 400 pieces. That's a great commercial result for Masterworks because remember, they take 11% upfront whatever happens to the asset. And I guess they spend a lot of that on marketing. They do so in a very illiquid art market where they talk about artist market. When one piece sells. The whole market for this artist goes up. There's a recent real life example of such a strategy where you keep buying as prices go up. It's presented to us by Bill Juan of Artigos, who kept buying the same stocks again and again and recorded a fantastic increase in his portfolio up to 20 billion until he had to sell and lost everything in two days, if you look at one of his favorite stocks, Viacom, it's pretty clear what he was buying and when he was selling. So we should probably be worried about the fact that Masterworks is becoming the biggest holder 
of all those assets. The second aspect is custody. Investors in those paintings should expect that they're held for 10 years. The only thing they want to worry about is, is the price up or down? I think there might also be some risk of masterworks itself. After all, it is a startup, startups fail, and you don't want a credit risk there. Some startups like Vinovest have said that there is no risk of us disappearing. You hold the assets in their case wine directly. In the case of Masterworks, they are making all the decisions on each uh, painting. We could be in a situation where a painting performs well, but there's trouble in getting access to it because in 10 years, we don't know what happens to Masterworks. There's another video about the marketing of Masterworks, their manipulation of data, the tricks that they use, and the fact that so many influencers are pushing it without doing their proper due diligence because they're paid by Masterworks. You can guess that this video is not sponsored by Masterworks, although I was contacted to do a sponsor video. Masterworks, a good example of the opportunity and the challenge of this democratization of new assets. Yes, you can now invest in art without hanging it in your living room, but I think it's sold in a way that would never be allowed for traditional investment. Masterworks is just too good at marketing, and I think it's mis-selling a lot of those paintings. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to stay vigilant, diversify, educate yourself on all these opportunities. And by the way, I've got a course about accessing alternative assets that you can see in the link below. And please subscribe to Investorama to show your support and to get regular updates. I'll see you next time with another due diligence. Thank you.